Hello guys and welcome back to my channel Civil Construction and Builder and in this video I will show you how to design an isolated footing that is basically a eccentric isolated footing. However, such footings are generally avoided but in case of small axial load from colon, for example in case of steel structures uh, and simply a one story residential building, the axial load from the colon can be very much less and depending upon the type of soil that is the bearing capacity of the soil, we can provide eccentric footing. But generally it is avoided because it is a little bit difficult to design such type of footing that is to satisfy the bearing pressure. So basically uh, I am taking example of this type of structure that is you can see here this is a simple one story steel structure. So the load will be very much less in the column. In such cases the structural load that is the weight of the column is converted or is transferred to the footing through a pedestal that is a column pedestal and that will be uh, fixed at the isolated footing and looking at the condition of the plant so here you can see these all are concentric isolated footing in some cases there is eccentric so here you can see these are eccentric so these are the face column and these are the edge column so we will design either as per the requirement so let us check for this so we can get the axial load on this it is 13 kN so it is a very small load so we can design such type of footing so let me start with the data entry over here so we'll be considering M20 grade of concrete, steel, uh, steel will be 500, FP 500, bearing capacity of soil, so let us assume to be as 120, followed by unit weight of soil, 16 kN, that is for the, or we can also go for 15, that is the dry unit weight of soil, unit weight of concrete 25, size of column, so that is, in this case it will be a pedestal, so let us assume that it is 300 by 300, depth of footing, so generally a minimum 5 feet, that is provided as the depth of footing, that will be 1524 mm service axial load from column so it is 13 kN moment about x and moment about y so so for now it is 0 0 so if you have any moment that is uh, mx or my you have to enter here because that will alter the bearing pressure so for now it is 0 eccentric distance of column so here you can see ex and ey so ex and ey these are the eccentric distance so we will get that as per the requirement here so for now our case is that the footing is at the edge so we will provide the value until it is satisfied over here for example if i provide a length of footing so you can see here d1 so you can just get representation from this image d1 d2 d1 d2 ex and ey for example let me provide as 1000 mm let us check if it is satisfied or not so now I have to change the value of EX and EY to make sure that it is as per the requirement. So now it coincides. So this is the case. So 350 by 350 is the eccentric distance. Now provided. So in this case we will provide the value and check whether it satisfies the bearing pressure or not. Now overall thickness. So let us assume as 300 mm and effective cover. Take this as 50 mm and effective depth of footing will be 250 mm now net soil pressure calculation axial load is 13 kN self weight of footing so this is on the basis of the dimension of the footing provided and the unit weight of concrete so this comes as 7.5 and weight of backfill so this will depend upon the dimension of footing and the depth of foundation which is 1524 and unit weight of soil so this comes as 18.36 kN so this weight of backfill acts as a stabilizing force because this force will help to avoid tension in footing so if we provide so as we know we are getting axial load in this point so when we punch this or when the axial load punch this down so this region may undergo uplift that is tension will be created so if we provide uh, uniform load of backfill then it will act as a stabilizing force so I am considering that weight of backfill so total load will be 38.36 kN and additional moment due to eccentricity so basically this load into eccentric distance so column load into eccentric distance so we get 4.55 on either side now moment of inertia ixx iyy so this is for a rectangular shape that will be bd cube by 12 and b cube by b cube d by 12 and now we can compute the pressure so net upward pressure on footing we will compute for four sides one two three four and here you can see sigma top right so this is the maximum value so we can automatically get idea about that this point is of this point where the axial load is concentrated 
and similarly in the bottom left so it will have the minimum and make sure this value should not be greater than the allowable bearing capacity and should not be less than zero to avoid tension because swell is very bad in tension so it is greater than zero so it is okay now flexural design so we will take the average of this value as the maximum swell pressure and that pressure will create some moment considering the cantilever portion so we get 20.38 kN as the factor load for flexor and moment will be 3.56 kN now area of steel required for this moment will be very much less 3.5 kN meter so we get 33 mm square now minimum area of steel we can get this so we'll compute the reinforcement required on the basis of the minimum reinforcement so diameter of bar let us provide as 12 mm and the spacing required will be 333 so minimum will provide as 150 mm so we'll get 12 at 150 as the distribution bar as well as main bar so now flexural check is done similarly we'll check for one way shear we'll check for the two way shear and also for the development length and for the bearing that is the bearing stress of concrete so all the checks are done and finally we'll get overall design as okay if not then you will get here fail and then we have to check that again so for now for such loading that is isolated uh, footing subjected to an eccentric loading of 13 kN we will be providing a footing of length 1 by 1 meter and with depth 0 0.3 meter and main rebar and distribution rebar as 2 well at 150 and that should be sufficient so the main idea of this video was to make uh, clear about the eccentric isolated footing that is the idea how to compute swell pressure and check for all ages i hope this video helped you and if it did help do like and comment in the video and subscribe to our channel and if you want this excel sheet just click on the link in the description box and you will get a mail from us regarding the process how to get this excel sheet thank you